So this morning I was having my morning coffee and I was reading my comments and there was one that struck me on one of my older videos. This one right here. You didn't show how to do the wiring and that is the hardest part. But I'm going to show you guys a few different ways how to wire up an electric fuel pump and you can choose the one that works the best for you. So let's talk about this. So your basic electric fuel pump is going to have two wires. One's going to be a ground and one's going to be your power or your positive. So for the grounding, no, you don't have to run it right back to the battery. That's going to be a lot of wire and it's going to look messy in the engine bay. What I recommend doing is if your pump is say under the cab or it's on the frame, find a piece on the frame that has a hole in it already. Put a bolt through there, wire wheel the whole area there, and then that's where you're going to put your ground wire for that pump. So as you guys can see, this is the ground for the fuel pump. It comes right off here and it goes down. This is the wire, it goes right here. It's within two inches of the fuel pump. So there's not a lot of wire. So I saved a lot of wire. There's less wire to get snagged and rubbed on stuff and ruined. So now that we've worked on the ground part, we can go to the fun part, the part that we're, we're getting power to that pump so that pump can fire up and we can get that fuel pump going. Now here, I'll show you how my truck works. So when I turn this key, this pump fires up. You can see it's off, now it's on. When I turn the key, it's off regardless. I'll show you how I hook this up and why. So as you guys can see down here, this is the fuse panel by the pedals. So what we have here is I snuck around and I looked for a very specific um, plug. So as you can see, this is ignition unfused. That's what that says right there. So this here, this green wire, is ignition unfused right here. This wire goes up and it goes over to this panel right so here. So what this means is every time I turn that ignition on, unfused power is going up that line, up that wire to that switch panel. Now we already have an inline fuse, so it doesn't matter that we're pulling unfused power, it's completely fine. Now you may ask why I didn't just go to the unfused power and just run it right off the ignition. Well, the th reason is, is that I need the secondary switch. So if I'm doing troubleshooting for something on the electrical or I want the lights on for some reason, I'm checking something out, I can simply turn the fuel pump off and I can leave the key on. Now this would be sort of similar to if we ran a wire from the battery through the cab and we ran it inside. Now if we ran a wire from the battery up through the cab, up through that switch, it would be the same thing but again we're using so much more wire there's more wire in the engine bay there's more wire under the dash whereas going right from that switch to that fuse block that's a lot less wire compared to running it through so it means you're wasting less wire you have less wire that could get damaged and it's just a lot more simple say you're running something like a mower or a swather or you know some type of farm equipment and you don't have that fuse panel you can run right off the battery to a switch or in some cases in the past, I've looked for the hot post on the ignition and I've taken right off the ignition switch and just spliced power away. Or on some ignitions, like on this Kubota G3200, you have an accessory port on your switch. So you can just run it to the accessory port. So again, port. we have from the fuse block, we have from the battery, we have tapping into other wires that have power. And then we have going to a more proper way compared to the last one we just talked about, and that is going to the accessory port on an ignition. If you have something like a mower like this Kubota, or you have a swather combine, something like that.